Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the early season 18 legend tier list. Unfortunately, there were not a lot of legend changes that are really going to be shaking up the meta, so a lot of them are going to be staying in the same place, but still some people might be wondering where everybody fits in, so let's break it down. But just quickly, if you guys are looking to absolutely smash season 18 out of the park and hit a new peak rank, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have top level coaches creating the best, most highly informative guides to make you the best player you can possibly be. We have legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, and a bunch of more stuff planned for season 18, so click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, and start to improve today. But okay, jumping into things, we're going to work away from the bottom and go to the top. And also, I do want to point out, because some people are still confused, when I put a legend in the same tier, the spot that I put them in doesn't matter. So if they're first, second, third, fourth, fifth, it doesn't matter. If they're in the same tier, they're on the same level, in my opinion. But with that covered, let's move into the D tier, and there's two legends that are still finding themselves here, and that is Lifeline and Mirage. Now these two legends fall into the same pit. They just don't really have a spot on the team. There's no real use for them. Yeah, Lifeline is actually a support character and she does what a support wants to do, but she's never really actually able to do it if you're in a fight where people actually understand what they're doing. Her combat res can be cool, but people are just going to rush you anyway and they're either going to push you off the res and throw your teammate or they're going to kill you and then kill the teammate that's just not really able to do anything. And then Mirage just straight up doesn't fit into any role. Sometimes people want to play him as a support character but he doesn't have anything to actually support the team other than his res and it's really not that good and his secondary fragger abilities also aren't really there there's nothing that really makes him that kind of character until they really fix these two legends they're still going to be in the same d tier but moving forward let's move into the c tier and there are four legends here we got ballistic fuse octane and rampart now, I honestly had really high hopes for Ballistic. I thought he was going to be a lot better than he actually was. But he's really, really niche, and he just actually doesn't do a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. The unlimited ammo is nice in a pinch, but again, super niche. And he really doesn't feel good to pick up over most of the other legends in the game. That is why I have him down in the C tier. But next up, we've got Fuse. And Fuse is one of the characters that wants to create chaos. He wants to make sure that people aren't able to play in the same spot for very long. But right now in Apex, the fights are extremely death y People just want to run at you. A whole lot of times, they're not actually going to be playing the same position over and over and over. And if they are, you should probably be taking advantage of that. So Fuse is trying to create chaos, but he doesn't actually get to do it in the way that he wants to do it. And it's just weird. And he doesn't actually have a whole lot of usefulness. So his C tier is where he finds himself. Next up, we have Octane. And I know a lot of people that are playing Octane are going to be screaming. But just listen to me. This tier list is based off of how useful you are in the meta. And right now, the meta is based off of how much utility teams have in fights. Octane does not bring a lot of utility. His passive doesn't help the team. His tactical doesn't help the team. The only thing that helps the team is his jump pad and there's better options out there is octane good yes for the very small percentage of the player base that can actually utilize his movement fully if you're playing against an octane that knows how to do all of the movement techniques if you're going up against somebody like lemonhead then yeah octane is amazing but for the vast majority of the player base he's not actually that good and for a team comp he's not that good so that is why he's in c tier and the last legend in C tier is Rampart. Now, Rampart is actually getting a buff in Season 18 because the Spitfire is receiving some buffs. And if Rampart gets her hands on a Spitfire and gets to sit behind her wall, she's going to be sending so many bullets your way. But the issue is actually being able to set up and get to that point where you can actually hold your walls. If you're playing against a team that actually understands what to do, they can counter you so easily and you're actually not going to be doing a whole lot. And Rampart has to be playing zone for the most part. She wants to be able to get to a building. She wants to set up. So if you're playing anything other than zone, she's losing a lot of effectiveness. I would say at this point, the only really good thing about her kit is Sheila. And again, that's super counterable because she's very slow. It has the wind up time. You get to see the laser. You know exactly where she's looking. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. So C tier is where she finds herself still. But that's our C tier done and covered. So let's move into the B tier. And there are six legends finding themselves here. We've got Ash, Crypto, Mad Maggie, Pathfinder, Valkyrie, and Vantage. Now, for people that have been big fans of this channel for a while and have watched most of the tier list, you'll know that I actually have a pretty soft spot in my heart for Ash. I used to think that she was such an underrated character, but she's just continued to fall in the meta and her usefulness. She was a great alternative to Wraith when Wraith wasn't in the best of positions, but Wraith just continues to receive buffs and she's already a fantastic character. 
So that just lowers Ash's usefulness. Can Ash be super aggressive and be an off angling secondary fragger? Absolutely. But with a bunch of other off angling secondary fraggers that can do exactly what she can do, there's just better options out there. And that's why I'm putting her in the B tier. Moving into our next legend though, we have Crypto. And Crypto is in one of the weirdest spots right now. Crypto is actually extremely strong when he gets to do what he wants to do. He wants to go to zone. He wants to play on his Game Boy. He wants to sit in a building. And yes, ranked is a little bit more like that with more emphasis on placement points and people actually going for more end game stuff. But fights are super weird. People will push buildings without really understanding why they're pushing the building. They just see you. They see that you're holding it and they want to take it. It's in this really weird state right now. If people start to play a little bit more passively and allow you to actually play in the building without trying to take it from you, then crypto would be in a lot higher of a position. But right now, you'd rather just have a little bit more utility to hold that building something like a catalyst over a crypto. So he does fall a little bit in the meta, but he is still pretty strong. Moving into our next legend though, we have Mad Maggie, and she was on the receiving end of a nerf for this season, and I don't really understand why. Her Wrecking Ball wasn't super strong to begin with. Half the time it doesn't even work the way that you intend it. You just kind of use it as a speed boost. But that nerf will take her down a little bit because the reason that Mad Maggie was so aggressive was because you could throw your Wrecking Ball out so quickly and be able to just push teams on a whim. But with the Wrecking Ball still being pretty glitchy and now having a higher cooldown, I don't think that I can continue to put her in A tier, so I'm going to be putting her in the B tier. And next up, we have Pathfinder. Now, Pathfinder players, I feel sorry for you because Pathfinder has just been beat down with nerfs. Respawn hates him. For some reason, they decided to nerf his zipline. And I know that he still does have his passive where you can look at a care package and get it back instantly. But without that care package, it's going to be so long before you actually get your zipline. And with the rings actually moving in a lot faster and games being done two and a half minutes faster than they used to be, there's going to be a lot less options for Pathfinder to be getting ziplines out. So it's going to be actually a huge nerf to him. I don't understand what Respawn's thinking, but I can't justify putting Pathfinder anything higher than B tier right now. Next up though, we have Valkyrie. And Valk is another legend that's just been getting hit by nerf after nerf after nerf. And with the introduction of the Evac Towers, there's even less of a need for a Valkyrie on your team. She is still good in some pretty niche circumstances, but there's again, just other legends that do what she does better. And the only really unique thing that she brought to a team was her ultimate, but now you can just Evac Tower. So there's a lot less usefulness for her. So she does fall in the tiers and that's why she's in B tier. And the last legend in B tier is Vantage. Now Vantage actually is probably one of the most slept on legends in the game. A lot of people really underestimate how strong she can actually be. You have a free sniper rifle that does a massive amount of damage. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting on her, I've been looking at a team and I hit them with my sniper rifle and they just continue to peek me and give me a free kill. But her sniper is pretty strong and Echo also allows for some pretty good mobility and she can get a ton of information to her team so she is going to be a middle of the pack legend and that's why I have her in B tier. But now that we have those covered, let's move on into our A tier characters. Getting things rolling in the A tier though, we have Catalyst. And Catalyst is really good at funneling people. She can stop death ball pushes by blocking off doors. She can make people go where they don't want to go because of her wall. She can actually play around with the way that teams want to push you and she does it very effectively. She also doesn't really stop your team or hinder them at all because they can still open the doors. They can still take down your barricades. They can go through your wall. There's a lot of stuff that Catalyst can do that helps her team and she has so much utility at her disposal. This season, I don't think Catalyst is going to fall any further in the tiers. I think she's going to be a really strong A tier legend just because of how good her kit can be in a lot of different fights. Moving forward though, we have Horizon and Horizon is again in a really weird position. She's really strong, but at the same time, she's also not really strong. Her ultimate is one of the abilities that can just win fights on its own, but you have to be going up against people that panic and don't shoot it right away. It's extremely easily countered, but a lot of people just for some reason don't counter it and they allow Horizon to do what she wants to do. She's in a really weird spot and she's really good in a lot of different situations because people panic when they see her. Her gravity lift is still pretty strong, it can take high ground really easily, it's also pretty quiet most of the time, and her passive allows her to do some really cool movement techniques. 
She's a really strong offensive character. I think she's in a really good position in the A tier, but again, a really weird spot. So I'm just going to leave her here. Next up, though, we have Caustic and Watson. I'm going to talk about them together because they do pretty much the same thing, just in different flavors. They are the two control legends that really take away area from the other teams. Watson does it in a little bit more of a passive way. Caustic does it in a little bit more of an aggressive way. Watson is really good at stopping people from nading your building out and pushing you that way. But Caustic is really good at just denying so much area. And if you get Caustic to an end game circle, he can absolutely dominate. With rank still being pretty focused on placements, these two can allow you to get to endgame pretty easily because of how hard they make it for teams to push you. And they do give you a lot of comfort in end circles, so I do think that they are a very strong A tier pick. And the last character in the A tier is going to be Seer. Now he is getting hit with a few nerfs, so he's not going to be as annoying to fight against, but he's still going to be Seer. He is still going to be pretty strong. He gets a ton of information out in fights, and he is still going to be pretty annoying because he is still going to silence. The silence and the slow are not nearly going to be as bad, but it's going to be firing a lot faster, so it's going to be a lot easier to hit, so you can time it with your team, and he's still going to be pretty hard to fight, so I'm going to be leaving him in the A tier. That's our A tier coverage, so let's move into our next tier, which is actually the secretly broken tier. And there are two legends going into here. There's Gibraltar and Revenant Reborn. Now, Gibby has a weird history with Apex. When it first came out, he was awful. Then he was good. Then he was kind of mediocre. But now he's actually going to be pretty strong again. He's going to be going back into a pretty strong spot in the meta because a lot of his counters are not going to be seen as much or are just completely gone. And with the buffs coming into shotguns, bubble fighting is going to be a lot more viable of an option now. On top of that, he also did get a buff to his defensive bombardment, so you're going to be able to use that a lot more often. It's a pretty strong ultimate. It can do a lot of different things. I think Gibraltar is actually going to be a very slept on pick. So if you're looking for a strong defensive type character that can support, try picking him up. And next up, we have Revenant Reborn. Now, usually when we have a new character come into the game, they are always going to be broken on some level because usually people don't really understand how to fight against them. So it allows them to get away with stuff that they shouldn't actually get away with. But with Revenant, it seems like his kit is actually going to be pretty overpowered. He's going to be able to do a lot of different things because now he's going to be more of a secondary fragger who takes off angles and plays a little bit more selfishly. His kit is completely designed around that, and I think it's going to be really good for him. And I think a lot of people are going to be struggling with him early on in the season. Though, do keep in mind, we are going to be doing a mid-season tier list, so if he does kind of move around, stay tuned for that. But now we can move into our S tier, the top of the top, the best legends of the game, and there are five here. We've got Bangalore, Bloodhound, Loba, Newcastle, and Wraith. Starting up with Bangalore, because a lot of people are going to be questioning Bangalore in here, because she also did get a nerf going into Season 18, but the nerf was to her ultimate. It's just going to be a little bit longer to get now. But the strong part of her kit wasn't the ultimate. The strong part of her kit is just how much utility she has with the smoke grenades and her double time, and technically the ultimate on top of that, but again, it wasn't the strong part of her kit. She can cut off line of sight, she can play around the smoke, she can play with digi threats, she can get that speed boost to be absolutely insane to hit. There's just so much that she can do, she's going to continue to be a very strong legend. Next up we have Bloodhound, and Bloodhound is always going to be a very solid go-to pick. The scans give out so much information, you can get your ultimate extremely quickly with the White Ravens, you can tell where teams are with the White Ravens, you can scan the recon beacons to get even more information. And your ultimate makes you an absolute demon in fights. You get so much speed from it. You're the second fastest running character in the game at that point. You get a free digi threat, so you counter legends like Caustic and Bangalore. There's just so much packed into that kit, it's hard to not be S tier. And speaking of getting so much value from a kit, we gotta talk about Loba. Loba does so much for her team, no matter what playstyle you have. If you want to play zone, cool, you can get a bunch of ammo and meds from Loba so you can continue to poke, let people know where you're playing, hold your position extremely well, and not be afraid to take some certain fights because you have the ability to refresh all of your ammo and everything like that with Loba. But if you're playing Edge, she can be highly aggressive, taking off angles, braceleting back to her team when need be, and still get you a ton of stuff with her Black Market. If you're in the middle of a fight and you run out of ammo, you slam down a Black Market, grab some ammo, continue to fight. She can do everything and she looks good while doing it, so definitely an S tier material pick. Next up, we have Newcastle, and again, for the people that have watched this channel before, you know I love Newcastle. He didn't receive any changes, he's still going to be as strong as he ever was. He's going to continue to be a really good S tier pick, and he might actually be moving into S plus if there was an S plus rank because of the changes to shotguns. He loves to play with shotguns because of the different abilities that he has in his kit. 
If you slam down a wall next to a team and you start to play your shotgun around the wall, it's going to be doing so much damage. Newcastle is still going to be such a strong pick. And lastly, of course, we have Wraith, the queen of the portals, the legend that has always been strong in Apex's past. She did go through a weird phase once, but she was still a good pick. And with the buff to her portal, again, she's still going to be amazing. Wraith has always been in such a good spot. She's always been such a good legend. You have a get out of jail free card. You can play extremely split for your team. You can get them from point A to point B extremely safely because when they're in their portal they're immortal there's not a whole lot that i can say about wraith that hasn't been said already because she's just always been in this top tier spot but let me know if you guys would change the positions in comments down below and if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest greatest apex legends tips tricks and news don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button thanks all for watching once again amazing gaming i'll see you guys in the next one